7 p.m. in the Germantown Village Hall boardroom. This meeting has been given public notice in accordance with sections 19.83 and 19.84 of the Wisconsin statutes in such form that will apprise the general public and news media of subject matter that is intended for consideration and action. And we do also have people joining us uh, via WebEx. The roll call shows all village board members present. Uh, I believe Trustee Wing is joining us via WebEx and unsure if Trustee Peeper is also joined us via WebEx. Not at this time. Uh, perhaps she'll be joining us shortly then. At this time, I'll ask us all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next item is President's Report. Not uh, too much to report tonight. Uh, just kind of a, um, going over a little bit what was discussed at the last Village Board meeting. Some people have contacted me via email or phone call asking me what the Village is going to do about uh, Halloween. And my response has been uh, Halloween has never been a Village sponsored or supported event. We don't do anything to support it. We do set the hours of 5.30 to 7.30, but we don't put anything out to say that we are representing, present, or support Halloween. It's an individual or neighborhood themed event, and so those that are choosing to go out or not go out, we're leaving it up to the individual. So the village is not making a stance to say that we want you to go out or we don't want you to go out. We're not supporting it or, or never have. So it's really up to each family to decide what they want to do, how they want to practice uh, this particular event on October 31st, and what makes the most sense for them and their family in regards to uh, participating or not participating. So that's uh, what my statement has been about anybody that has asked me about what the village is going to do or say about Halloween. And there is a similar language out there on our website, on our um, Facebook page, and uh, some of the other areas where we uh, have social media presence are, are stating the same thing. So if anybody has any other questions about that, they can, of course, reach me or call the village or look at our website to see uh, how that's going to work. So that's all I have in regards to President's report. So we can then go to the next item, which is announcements of forthcoming events of public interest, committee, and department reports. And we'll start with committee chairs and committee reports with Trustee Zabel. Uh, General Government and Finance met earlier tonight and we'll meet again on November 16th at 6 p.m. in this room. Thank you. Trustee Miller. Public Safety will meet on Monday, November 2nd at 6 p.m. Thank you. Trustee Kaminsky. Public Works will meet in this room on Tuesday, November 10th at 6 p.m. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything else for announcements of forthcoming events of public interest, committee, or department reports? All right, then we'll go on to the next item. Uh, before we do, I'm sorry, uh, we would uh, have something to bring forward from the uh, village clerk in regards to election update. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this evening, I did ask uh, the rest of the clerk's team to come to the uh, village hall board room meeting. And so if you would just come forward, uh, we've got Ben Hubrick. He is here with the village. He's done a terrific job. He's deputy clerk treasurer. And then um, Valerie Bauer, 24 and a half years with the village. Thank you for coming here this evening. So everybody can see you know, a, a face with the name. And then Jennifer Rozak all the way in the back. She just started with the village. Thank you for coming. Yeah, so just to give you an idea, there is an election on November 3rd. Regular polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on November 3rd. Uh, tomorrow, October 20th, is when the in-person absentee voting starts at the Village Hall. We do have extended hours for that. It is on our website, Facebook, Nextdoor. It was in the um, 
the newsletter that was put out, we just ask people to remember their photo ID. If they have a question about photo ID or voter registration, we also <coughs> include our phone number and an email address that goes to all of us here so that we can help individuals with that. Um, currently, there is over 5,700 absentee ballots that have been mailed out to um, those that have requests. And voter registration is just over 14,500. So just to give you an idea, it will be very busy here at the Village Hall in the next couple weeks during that absentee voting time. So. How many have returned? Um, we're just over 60% returned. 3,600 or something? Thank you, Ben. Yeah, 3,600 returned. And these are locked up and secured every night in my office. Um, so we do keep these secure until processing on Election Day, November 3rd. Trustee Myers. Deanna, could you just state for the people here what the extended hours are in place? Oh, yes. And they're, they're on our website, but from Tuesday, October 20th through Thursday of this week, we are open 8 to 5.30. Friday is a regular day, 8 to 4.30. Saturday, we're, we're here Saturday, 8.30 to 12.30. And then next week, starting October 26th through Thursday, it's 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Then the Friday, 8 to 5. And then that last Saturday, October 31st, 8.30 to 12.30. Thank you, Deanna. You're welcome. And on that last Saturday, there is not any voter registration. It's only absentee voting. There's no voting or uh, registration the day before the election. Trustee Zabel. Now, you actually will be counting these on the 3rd, and the numbers should be available that night then? Correct. So what will happen on November 3rd, the regular polls will be open, and then the absentees will be counted here at Village Hall. They are then uploaded to the county site. Now, even though you're counting them here at Village Hall, that is available for people to watch, or do you have to be a registered person to watch? You, you are correct. Um, I expect to have observers, and we will have placement of observers at all poll locations. But just to keep in mind, just like everything else, we'll have to be spaced apart. So that will be a consideration as well. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you, Village Clerk. Next item on the agenda is citizen input and public appearance. If you see the agenda, it's broken into two phases tonight. Uh, the first phase would be for anybody that wishes to come forward to bring something before this body uh, that's not related to a public hearing. There's no public hearing on tonight's agenda. But if anybody would wish to come forward, to uh, present to this body, all I would ask is that either you make yourself recognized via WebEx or come to the podium to state your name and your address for the record. There is a second part to this that I'll also announce, which is uh, the Village of Germantown providing the Village of Richfield with water and sewer utilities that we're looking for citizen input on. But this particular time, I'm just looking for anything other that somebody would want to bring forward in regards to citizen input or public appearance. Is there anyone wishing to come forward for anything other than what's on item A at this time? Okay. Is it in regards to item A or is it separate from? It is in regards to item A. Okay. Yes, that'll be fine, Jan. Okay. I'm going to give Jan the work. I'm going to tell you what I want. I noticed that there is an ordinance um, pending on creating a residential ticketing. And it's really a question and concern. What is the difference between ticketing and protesting? And is this um, something that other villages in the area, in Washington County or Menominee Falls, um, are there on their uh, books? Um, and I know that we've had some incidents here in Georgetown where we want our residents to be safe. However, I'm, I'm questioning whether or not this is um, 
encouraging upon anybody's right to voice their opinion. And that's a question, Mrs. Miller? Yes. yes. Okay, I would leave that to the village attorney who drafted the ordinance. We can talk about it. We can talk about it at the time we bring it forward, or if it's broken out as part of the consent agenda, would that be all right with you? That would be fine. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anything else, Ms. Miller? You know what? My other comment is on water sewer. Okay, thank you. If there's not anyone else that wishes to come forward, then the next item on the agenda is citizen input and public appearance on items not subject to a public hearing for item A, which is Village of Germantown providing Village of Richfield with water, sewer, utilities. Before we ask other people to come forward, I do have a couple emails and uh, contacts to read into the record. The uh, first one came in uh, today. And it says, uh, thank you for considering my email. I, I am hoping that the Village Board takes the necessary steps to stop further discussions, negotiations with Richfield regarding their quest for a bailout. Germantown saw a need to develop a sewer and water utility many, many years ago, and we continue to approve upon it as we did. Development followed, or as major developments came before the Board or Plan Commission, decisions were made on how the village would furnish utilities either with existing capacity or expanding capacity. If Richfield feels they need to develop with sewer and water, they should study the process used in Germantown and what Germantown saw as a need and be build the needed utilities. Too bad they waited this long and the cost seemed prohibitive. I recall meetings in the 70s when we sat together at the table and previous boards from Richfield stated publicly they will never allow development that requires sewer and water. I also require those same statements made in the 80s and even into the 90s. Too bad, so sad. We currently have in excess 570,000 square feet of brand new beautiful industrial building space available for lease or sale in the Holy Hill Road, Goldendale Road area, an additional 760,000 square foot if the Briggs Building becomes available. Also, land on the Gateway Crossing land and the Dickman and Dielectric land totaling in excess of 50 acres available, serviced with our utilities. Why would we even consider arranging an agreement with a competitor being Richfield? Again, in my opinion, there should be no need for the staff to spend time on drafting an intergovernmental agreement. Let's continue to grow our development on lands now serviced with our utilities. And that says thank you from Bill Wetterall. Next items that were sent to us. First one comes uh, from our, in our next door comments from our posting on next door. First one comes from Laura R. Uh, wait, I live in the village of Germantown and I don't even have water sewer utilities. Can I provide input into v providing water sewer utilities to the village of Germantown? Another one is from Robert Yu. It is my understanding that that our wells are already taxed for the amount of people using it and we are in need of another water tower by servicing or helping out Richfield. I don't believe we should even be a thought. You're going to end up charging taxpayers more money because you need to build another water tower and then charge Richfield to make a profit off of that and the taxpayers pay for you to make a profit. I vote no. Next one comes uh, in today via email. And it states, we are against a utility extension to Richfield to help them attract developers who might otherwise develop Germantown land. It seems that the village should take care of its own citizens first. The argument for any future Richfield development using Germantown utilities would expand the utility customer base and revenue to the utility is a nice wish, but not a guarantee. The village of Germantown is having enough trouble finding funds to care for its own needs, i.e. fixing roads desperately in need of repair and should be using money it has for the needs of its own citizens. Being a good neighbor is a nice idea, except not in this case. Again, we strongly oppose this idea. Sincerely, Gail L. Lutke and Diane M. Takala, West 168 North 12350 Century Lane in Germantown. So those are the uh, comments that we had received via email or from um, our social medias, one being next door. Is there anyone else that is with us tonight or online via WebEx that would like to come forward at this time to speak about citizen input and public appearance for the Village of Germantown providing Village of Richfield water sewer utilities? 
Yes, if you, Jan, I'm going to take somebody in the audience here first, and then we can come to you after if that's okay. And then please state your name and your address for the record. Phil, can you make sure that microphone's on, please? Thank you. Hi there. I'm actually the Laura from the Next Door Commons. So Laura Research. I'm at N132 West 17376 Rockfield Road. Um, so I have a Richfield address. I pay taxes to the village of Germantown. Um, in the area that I'm in, um, like I mentioned, I would like us to be considered prior to extending that to the village of, of Richfield. Um, in the unique situation I'm in, um, the previous owner was approved a land sale that got rid of most of my lawn. So if I had to put in a new septic, I'm kind of with my hands tied. I don't have enough lawn to actually put in a regulated septic for this like 2020 regulations. So um, having sewer extended to my area would actually be a nice benefit to being a village of Germantown resident. So um, unless this also includes coming up to Rockfield Road, I would oppose this. Thank you. Okay, thank you for coming forward. Ms. Miller, would you like to speak at this time? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, I'm Jan Miller, W1 Brainborn, and one of the students that are great songs that both of us. Um, I'm here to um, speak against the um, having Richfield as a um, sort of a neighborhood that has been a lot of sewer development. Um, as I looked at both of the opportunities and the risks, I think there are a lot more risks that were not lifted um, than are, and there are um, opportunities. Um, the interstate will grow um, the area around it. Um, I think we are still in a COVID-19 situation. Um, I think that um, retail places um, industrial spaces will come to us relatively slowly but steadily and um, we need to make commitments on growth in our own community. Um, I think the biggest risk is already uh, stated in, the, in, in, in your uh, assessment here that Germantown has not completed the 2050 plan a land use plan, and I think that needs to be done first before we go um, extending our, our units and our resources to another community. I don't think their ask will be um, the last time they ask. If I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, um, when Richard went out and tried to put the sewer in by themselves, I think they were looking at $44 million to do this on their own. And I, I, if they're that passionate about bringing an industry, then they'll, they'll make the necessary uh, commitment and investment. So my recommendation is for uh, more to um, not go with the with you, um, water sewer uh, opportunity here. Thank you for coming forward. Is there anyone else that wishes to come forward at this time for a citizen input public appearance in regards to the village of Germantown providing the village of Richfield with water sewer utility? Anyone else wishing to come forward for a citizen input or public appearance in regards to item A, village of Germantown providing village of Richfield with water sewer utility? Sir? Hello, I'm Chad Vandezandi with the uh, Cushman Wakefield Berkey Company. My address is 134 Woodland Lane, Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Work with the landowner in Richfield, uh, right on the, would be the northwest corner, uh, which would be potentially some industrial development. I think I'd like to just state that the partnership with Richfield in, in Germantown and looking at what Rich, Richfield's ultimate goals are to attract a large regional national player that looks for that 100 plus acres that would bring thousands of jobs to the area would be a, a, an incentive for the corridor, would be something that would start even and improve what you have. 
attracting other players along with them, uh, creating more jobs for the, the people of Germantown in the regional area. This is, this is a, a rarity in, in the Metro Milwaukee area. There, there are not 100 acre sites left that are developable for any of the larger users that we're seeing out there, whether they be e-commerce, large manufacturers. You guys have done a tremendous job of what you've done with the, the village and the current development that you've seen. But if you look at it and you look at access and you look at what a lot of the large players look for today, I mean, you guys are running onto that very narrow look. I think the one Waterall comment was is we've got a 50 acre site here, you know, to develop and we have a piece here and a piece there where the Germantown site or the Richfield site is 200 acres and really the, the impetus of that would be to look for larger users not to compete with Germantown but to add another player to the corridor that would attract more as a more legitimate legitimacy to what you already have to create more jobs and to create something that you probably can't develop very easily in that nature. Now, will that spur other development in, in the Richfield area? Yes, but I think it will do just the same for Germantown also with what you guys are putting together and what Richfield would like to see today on their site. And they can't do it without the sewer and water to play. And again, I'd like to state, and I, I do industrial real estate. I've been doing real estate for 30 years in the metro area and actually across the country. This is a rare opportunity for the corridor, for the region to be something bigger um, than a farm field, something bigger for the general area that you see. And again, the goal is to find that large user to come here that can't be serviced in the metro area right now and bring it up to this area. So we'd love to talk more, but in a, be, in a, in a, in a, a nutshell, that's really what we're looking for and what we're trying to drive here with the Richfield development, at least from the industrial side. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Anyone else wishing to come forward at this time for a citizen reported public appearance in regards to the village of Germantown providing the village of Richfield with water and sewer utility? All right, this is the first of uh, public input that we uh, have looked and requested in regards to this topic. The village board had it stressed that they wanted uh, several opportunities for the residents to come forward and speak on this. Um, I just want to let uh, the village administrator give us some input into the uh, the social media sites, who they're who they're contacting, what type of people are following, so that everyone has an idea of how many people we're reaching just from those avenues and uh, through any other means of public notice. Um, uh, th thank you, and it can provide a little bit of data here. And and actually, as we were looking at these numbers today, just occurred to me that over the past couple of years, um, I, I know the Village Board has really emphasized trying to do a better job of informing the public of, of things that were going on that, that are of interest and, and provide opportunities for input. Um, we've really worked to increase our social media presence and our on, online information. Um, one of the places where we posted this information was Facebook. Um, we have over 2,500 followers on our Facebook page. Um, we, we had a, a lot of, uh, of views, of hits on Facebook for this item. Uh, next door, where some of the comments also came through, um, there's, uh, the, the best way to track that was that we had um, 668, um, and I'm not a next door user, so I'll, I'll just use the word views. There's a reaction or, or, or I can't remember the word now, but uh, it's a little bit uh, beyond my generation. But, um, but uh, anyways, it, 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 was, uh, it was a good number. Um, and then also we have on our website uh, an alert center uh, where we now have over 3,900 subscribers. So when an item like this gets posted on our news flash, uh, those, those subscribers um, are, are notified and get the information. So. Um, it's not all 20,000 residents, but it, it was a significant, you know, into the thousands of, of residents. And there's, I'm sure there's some overlap between these platforms, but I think it's safe to say that, that we were into the thousands of residents that, that were informed of the item and, and were able to see the information. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the Village Board had stressed the need for uh, the residents to have input. Are you looking for something other than what we've done tonight for 
the ability to get that input, or are you looking for something that's similar in what we did tonight? And I'm just looking for a consensus or input from the board as to what your thoughts are. Trustee Baum. In lieu of any plans or something that people can come and see and talk about, I think this is the best we can do is just get the word out there, have people come before us and tell us what they're thinking about. Until I have a plan of the area and something concrete that this is what we want to move to, part of the 2050 plan, I don't see having public hearings, public meetings on it, because there's nothing other than this discussion for everybody to respond to. So I'm content with what you're doing right now. Okay. Anybody else? Trustee Myers. Uh, Steve, you mentioned the, the amount of people following and so on and so forth, but I didn't hear any in response to if you kept track as to what their thoughts were at being a plus or a minus on that issue. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the comments that we received back were, were all read here um, uh, this evening. So. There were very, uh, as a percentage of the, the views, the, the comments were, were pretty minimal. Not, and not to, that's not at all, um, I'm saying they're not significant, but the, the, the number of, of comments relative to the number of views was pretty small. Uh, it, uh, that, that's important to, to take notice. They're very much appreciated because we are searching for that input. So if anybody has gone there and, and, uh, and looked at this and considered giving us some comment, I would appreciate uh, if anybody's gone there and, and knows of somebody else that you could direct in to that site for input, I would appreciate or ask them to call us or call your trustee or uh, email the village hall or, or however, but we, we are looking for that input. It's important that we get it because we will use it as part of our decision making process. Trustee Peeper. I was going to say, if I may, may Go ahead, you still Go ahead. The only thing I was going to mention is I, I, I am uh, one of the people on the next uh, site. I was f one of the first ones from the very beginning. It's very uh, helpful in many different e areas. That's all I want to say. Okay. Trustee Peeper. Um, is it possible on the social media sites to maybe put up a survey and let the public pick one way or the other, very generally asking? Like a survey monkey kind of a thing? Not even a survey monkey. I believe that Facebook lets you put up a survey and very simply putting it if they would be in favor or not and if you want more information on the background maybe even a link below like this is what we've gathered so far as we, as far uh, as information goes we actually do that on a, we haven't done it on this and we could um, we do that on a regular basis as one of the methods for generating views and, and getting people engaged um, uh, and uh, actually, uh, Michelle Tucker and Emily Zant are the leads on this, but they started what they call it, Tell Us More Tuesday. And they uh, sometimes they're, you know, uh, fun questions. What's your favorite Halloween candy? Um, other times it is more substantive, and uh, uh, it is something that we could do uh, along these lines. I would, one, one thing that I, I would point out to the board, though, is that uh, one of the challenges for, for public input on, uh, on a topic like this is it's a very, there's a lot of technical information um, that's not easy to convey in via social media and um, a, a lot of times the feedback uh, is, sometimes it, it is, some of the feedback comes from people who have a specific interest um, in, in the decision one way or the other. Um, sometimes it's it's people who it, it's more of a an initial gut reaction response, um, and I, I would not that it's, a, it's not helpful to have that information, but just as a, uh, uh, as a taking it within that context. Yeah, that's why I, I was wondering if there was a way to kind of post um, like a general question regarding it, but more information, maybe a link to another website that would display all the back history and really implications or you know positives negatives and everything before everybody so that way if somebody was going to take the survey they could click on the link and read everything that they wanted and then make their choice yes or no i think we can we can do something like that and, and we could make that happen fairly quickly okay sounds good thank you trustee peeper trustee zabel 
I just want to point out that tonight we're, we're looking at a contract for a tower. Now the recommendation from staff is that it to hold the, uh, the contract and direct staff to bring a draft intergovernmental agreement to provide sewer and water service to the village of Richfield during the November 2nd village board meeting. So if whatever we're going to do, it needs to be done quick because if there's going to be a draft intergovernmental agreement to us by November 2nd, which is only <coughs> two weeks away, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's going to be hard to get all the information. And look, cause obviously we're pretty close staff-wise anyway that there is somewhat of an agreement already out there. And I, I say that uh, we have a contract tonight to do the tower, and part of that contract has an additional cost to go on us to, I think it's, feet. you know, that's a 60 feet in height. Actually, it's gallons. No. <laughs> so so um, uh, it, it's an interesting concept, but if we're going to do things, it need to be done quick. Well, as the village administrator said that they can put that information in that survey up rather quickly. Probably by before the end of the week, I'd imagine, probably in the next day or so, uh, for those that want to get out there and get that information and have input uh, in regards to that topic. So it, it, we're not talking about two weeks to get it out there. I think it can happen in a couple of days. But it appears that the village board has to make a decision on November 2nd. That's correct. Okay, anything else on this item? Anyone else wanting to come forward to speak on this item? Trustee Hudson. Yeah, I have a question. How much water are we talking about selling? How big is the pipe that we're talking about running out there? Do we have any idea? That would be a question I'd defer to the uh, uh, Public Works Director who's been working on those questions. And then I'm going to have a follow-up question after that answer. So when you talk about how much water we would send or sell to um, Richfield, the other question is you start with how much sewer can we take back from them? Because we have a limited, a limited volume of sewer that we can't take back from them. And we have studied that, and their allowance is 0.77 million gallons a day. So I would suspect the water volume would be slightly above that because you don't get 100% back, um, but somewhere around there. And is that enough to support a site that's going to have, quote, thousands of jobs, end quote? The volume was based on, um, zoning, reg on zoning regulations and um, for, for that type of development they're proposing. And along with that, then the DNR has tables that um, establish um, design capacities as you would put towards a facility like that. So do, do they match up with the ballpark projection that we're talking about in thousands of employees, yes or no? I would say yes, but I don't know if you can get thousands of employees in a 200-acre site. So um, I don't know if that's a, just a discussion point, but um, you look at what's going on in, in Germantown right now, and all the, the, the business Stratton building hires, uh, they employ, I think, 17 people on a shift. Yeah, I think they have a total of... 700,000 square foot building. And um, how, how many acres is that? I don't remember how many acres. I know it's a 704,000 square foot building. Is it five acres, their site? Larger than that. 14 acres? So, and, and it all depends on the type of development you get that comes in. Um, um, we based it on the standard, standard employee flow per square footage of a commercial facility. You know, when you say you get thousands of jobs in there, that will be based on what those capacities are derived from. Thank you. Anything else in regards to this topic? Trustee Baum. Uh, if we want to get information out there, what information do we have? Because I have spent all this time listening to this discussion about this, and I've been asking for what are we doing, what is happening, give me information. But I don't see that we've been given information, so what are we going to put out there on a website 
for people to respond to? What, what, what kind of information do we have for that? Director? We have, um, we have drawings that we've used to develop the, the flows, the, the sewage flows that I just discussed in the, the associated water flows. We have a um, site plan um, with boundary designations from Richfield that are plotted out on a drawing. Um, there is an overview drawing of, of Germantown, the interstate, and the Richfield area, all um, plotted or plotted out on an overhead view. Um, there is a, a sketch done um, sometime back for Richfield that is used as a cursory type of thing with a, a single road going through um, six sites, maybe, don't quote me that, six or seven sites, maybe. But again, that depends on if you have a 50,000 square foot building or, you know, 700,000 square foot building going and how many sites you're going to have. Um, but there is a, there is a, a, a decent drawing that, that shows the two, uh, the industrial park and the layout for Germantown's Holy Hill area and uh, the associated area in Richfield behind Quick Trip. And basically that goes to Pioneer Road. Am I correct on that? So there is a, there is a, a nice map that would show the, the layout. You know, I've been instrumental in the 2050 plan, and we don't even know what we're doing on our side of the interstate. So I, I would question what information we have that we're relying upon, because we haven't figured out what we want to do, but we're saying we have enough for them to use. I haven't even heard these numbers for what we are going to want to use. So that's why I'm, I've, I've been saying I'm waiting for all the plans to come before us before I can even make a decision, but yet we're going to put stuff on a website that I don't even know about for everybody else to make decisions. Well, well I think to clarify, what, what we would put on the website is the information that we do have. And, and we don't have the 2050 plan. And that's, that's not complete, so there won't be a 2050 plan on, on the website or related to the survey. Um, and I think it, it, we've tried to We've acknowledged that, um, and that's that's I, I think has to be part of the um, or a piece of information, an important piece of information for the village board as you go you through your decision making process on this on this issue. And and it's uh, unfortunate we had planned to have that done or, or close to complete at this point. And I think with the delays because of, of COVID, um, we're we're not at that we're not at that point. Um, so we will. We'll, we'll provide the information that we have, the, the, the products of the engineering review that uh, the Public Works Director has been involved on, along with the consultants from Richfield. Um, we have, and I've summarized it in the, the memo um, for this evening, uh, the, uh, the Baker Tilly review, which, which was fairly brief and did not get into um, uh, some of the details that they would have to. Um, so there is a quite a bit of documentation. It, it isn't everything that it is not a, a, com, a fully complete comprehensive analysis and, and there are pieces that are missing. And I, I think that that's a, a, something that we would have to acknowledge as, as we put the information out there. But what we have, we, we would provide. And, and um, it actually, I think in one form or another has been put out in various uh, village board packets uh, in the past. There's probably is some additional supporting detail that's available, um, but we can provide that links and, and make that information available. Trustee Peeper. Um, we just brought sewer and water out to Briggs and Stratton, right? When was that brought out? <laughs> so that was they had the they had to move in in May of 2019. Mm -hmm. That's so by that time the sewer and water was run out there, right? Correct. Okay. And where was it run from? Run the from the corner of Flashdale and Goldendale Road. Right. Sorry, again late to the game. Tiff 7 brought it up to the railroad tracks on Goldendale and then Tiff 8 took it from the railroad tracks and up to <coughs> uh, the access at the uh, so um, that's where it's Briggs. starting, is pretty much at Briggs and Stratton, where they are right now? That's where it first came, and then now it's been spread across and has gone over to um, the dielectric area and has kind of headed up towards the backside of Rockfield Road. It's, up, it's extended to Rockfield Road and Gateway Crossing. Mm -hmm. Rockfield Road and Gateway Crossing. Correct. Right. Okay. Which is the, the road that the Briggs building is on, is Gateway Crossing. And then where is Richfield 
asking for it to be taken too. Just do you know where the quick, you know where the quick trip is? Yeah. The parcel that they're looking to develop is the parcel north of Quick Trip to Pioneer Road. North of Quick Trip. The vacant land behind Quick Trip on the west side of the interstate. North of Quick Trip to Pioneer Road. Okay. Sorry, I just needed a little background information. No, it's fine. It's understandable being uh, one of our newest members to the board. If I can go a little bit further on how we develop the flows, um, we did get um, um, uh, Jeff Retzloff involved as far as a planning issue, how to how to look at areas that weren't in to date, and we did account for uh, say the northeast corner of um, Golden Holy Hill, for example. We wanted to make sure we accounted for flows that were were possible and that we went heavier because we allowed for some commercial and some residential in those areas going going easterly, which would give us a little bit higher flow as far as per person. Doesn't account for a wet industry going in, of course. Or some sort of food processor, or like you said, a, a, a manufacturer that uses a lot of water. It, it seems to balance it out though when you get a, a, a warehouse in with 10 employees or five employees, which you seem to operate with because they're all computerized now. Um, the warehouse in building three of Zilbers, everything's computerized. Bridge and Stratton is all computerized. There's barcodes on the floors. That's why it's only 15 people that can run a 700,000 square foot warehouse. Um, so you never know which are going to be. Um, more intensive of flow or not, we just, on the average basis, we looked at it. And if I could just expand on, on the Public Works Director's comments there, the, the reason for that, and, and again, and I, it, you know, I, I wish that, that we were further along with the, the 2050 plan, and, and um, it's been one of the most frustrating things for me this year that, that um, for reasons outside of our control, we haven't been able to do that uh, because it is important for the village. But as as the engineering analysis has been going on, um, I, I think what we have tried to do is is make sure that we don't that we maintain the flexibility on the Germantown side um, to accommodate what that plan might be. I, I think we, there was there were enough discussions and uh, of of what types of things we may want on the Germantown side. And I think that as, as the public works director has been working on this, he's been very careful to make sure that, that um, um, you know, outside of something that's impossible to anticipate, that, that, that there, we would maintain the capacity on our side to, to provide for whatever the 2050 plan ends up um, putting on the Germantown side. Okay, anything else? If not, if there's nothing else, we can go to consent agenda. Move a motion to make the motion to approve A through F. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve consent agenda items A through F. Any discussion on that motion to approve? Trustee Baum. Like to pull item D for discussion. Just D? Yes. Okay. Because kind of C and E go, isn't it all together? No. no. Sort of. Okay. Any other discussion on consent agenda? No other discussion? Then we'll vote a uh, roll call vote on items A through F, excluding item D. Trustee Myers? Aye. Trustee Baum? Aye. Trustee Hudson? Aye. Trustee Kaminsky? Aye. Trustee Miller? Aye. Trustee Peeper? Aye. Is Trustee Wing on? He is Trustee Wing? No? He would have spoke. He would have spoke. He would have, oh, okay. he would have chimed okay. in long ago. Right. Ah. Trustee Zabel? <laughs> <laughs> President Walter? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, item D. Trustee Bond. Uh, yeah, I wanted, wanted to get input from the village attorney on what was written, why it was written, how this differs from protesting and picketing. If you can give us the background on this one. Um, sure. Uh, so there really isn't a difference between protesting and picketing. Um, what this particular uh, ordinance would do uh, really pro would prohibit uh, the uh, congregation of folks uh, outside of a residential property. Uh, it does not uh, prohibit folks from walking by 
um, you know, as part of a, of a parade or something along those lines. Uh, but it's it's really designed, and it's the, the language from it comes directly from a Supreme Court case uh, where the uh, issue was addressed, and uh, it's it's really just designed to to avoid those situations like we had earlier uh, this year uh, where there was a large group of individuals that basically uh, planted themselves in the streets in front of the house and uh, refused to leave. Um, and so this is uh, designed to take care of that. Uh, the other question that Ms. Miller had uh, is other communities. Uh, I have not done and, and didn't do a study of other expressly to see who has and hasn't adopted this type of language. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I know uh, Franklin, Germantown, or um, Greenfield, uh, are two that for sure have it um, because we, we looked at those. Uh, I think that I had heard that, that West Dallas either had or was looking at adopting uh, something similar as well. Um, so I, I know that there are some other communities that have this. The Supreme Court case uh, where this language was based off of is actually language that Brookfield has. So uh, I assume that that's still on their books since the uh, Supreme Court um, authorized them to do that. So it, it is something that is uh, utilized uh, within the area here. and. Uh, you know, whether anybody in, in Washington County uh, specifically has it, that I, I don't know. Does it impact anybody's freedom of speech, any rights of anybody? Um, I mean, that's a, a tricky one to, to answer, but in, in short, yes. I mean, it, it does potentially impact some speech rights in that somebody uh, will no doubt argue that my speech rights go so far as to be able to stand in front of somebody's house and yell and scream at them uh, at all hours of the day. And, um, you know, it, so in that respect, it does infringe on their rights. Uh, that said, uh, when it comes comes to First Amendment uh, rights and First Amendment uh, court cases and how the, the Supreme Court interprets those, uh, it is not an unlimited right. We have the ability to put reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions upon speech uh, to ensure appropriate government interests. And so uh, in this case, we see that the, the, the government interests are laid out in the declaration section of the ordinance. Um, and then that's followed with the uh, you know language in, in sub two that just says that you shall not. I would just add that if we look to pass this, uh, that uh, we would make an amendment to strike the word exceptions from sub two. Um, it, it shouldn't be exceptions. I'm, I'm not sure what uh, what the thought was there, but I think you can just strike it and, and not have any heading there, and it works the same. Ms. Miller, were all your questions answered with that line of discussion? Yes, um, we covered all of it in um, it came from the Supreme Court, so um, as long as we don't get in any trouble, that's the ordinance. If we're feeling as it, must be okay. I'll make a motion to approve item D as presented. Second. I, I, have some, I have some questions. Motion made and seconded. You don't wish to strike the language as requested or recommended? Right now, I'll just okay. Discussion, Trustee Hudson. Uh, the the demonstration that took place earlier this summer. Didn't we have laws on the books that we could have enforced and we chose not to? I mean, so you can't urinate on somebody's yard, right? That's that's illegal, and we knew that was going on, and we didn't enforce that. The public streets were blocked. And we didn't enforce any of those laws either. Isn't that correct? 
yes, th that is correct that there were uh, potential law violations that were not enforced for a number of reasons. Um, this, uh, in talking with the chief, just gives us another tool uh, that we can potentially utilize in, in terms of addressing these issues. For example, blocking of streets in and of itself is not something that we regulate uh, within our uh, code. And so the fact that they were there uh, blocking the street doesn't actually violate any particular code provision that we have. Um, certainly some of the other activities that you mentioned and things that took place that evening did in fact violate code provisions, whether it is you know, disorderly conduct or other things. Um, as we've discussed, there are reasons why there was not enforcement on that evening, um, and uh, certainly the police department has been prepared to enforce the regulations that we have on the books um, should we see a repeat of that where we, um, you know, for example, when the uh, DA's decision was just recently recently announced the police department was well prepared for uh, enforcing that and, and we're ready to do so. Um, so this just gives them uh, another tool to utilize to uh, address conduct that, that you know, maybe isn't all that uh, disorderly, um, but it nonetheless allows them to say, okay guys, let's move it on and, and get them out of the, the way. The, the problem I have with this is, to, to me, picketing is, is one person holding a sign walking back and forth on a sidewalk. That's that's very different than what occurred before, and I, I'm I'm not comfortable with the word picketing, demonstration, or a a time of day limit. I would be far more comfortable with. Well, uh, yeah, as I say, in terms of some of those other issues, I mean, we do have time of day restrictions in terms of noise ordinances that, uh, you know, would be put in place uh, and could be utilized for those types of things. Uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, demonstrations, um, you know, P picketing uh, is is a fairly broad uh, term. I, I agree that certainly that is you know the one concept is the guy walking around with the sign to do that. Um, that was not the the Brookfield case that was before that was, the Supreme I Court. It was uh, you know much broader conduct that was regulated mm -hmm. in that respect. So um, while picketing does have, I think you know in some contexts the, the you know the idea of that that sign and, and marching back and forth, uh, it is something uh, that. Um, is a little bit broader, at least in the in the legal parlance, um, as we look to, to deal with it. So it would cover um, the types of demonstrations that we saw as as part of. Um, but it would, it would also cover the single individual standing on the sidewalk, though. Too. Correct. Yes. Further discussion, Trustee Zabel. I put on the floor uh, an amendment that would uh, take the word exceptions from <coughs> Grand 2 off the book. That's your motion to amend? Yes. Motion made. Motion made to amend and seconded to the discussion on the motion to amend. No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Motion carries. Back to the motion as amended. Further discussion. Trustee Peeper. So you said that this wouldn't cover the type of protesting or picketing that was in the form of a parade, per se. So would these protesters legally be able to come in and protest past the House in a parade form, doing everything that they, want, they did before, but just walking by and not congregating in one spot? Um. Uh, again, it would depend on the circumstances. We have other regulations that can be implemented and utilized to deal with certain activities. So, for example, one of the complaints that evening was uh, individuals that were urinating uh, in yards. That is, you know, I mean, we clearly have regulations against indecent exposure and, uh, you know, just generally orderly conduct uh, that would prohibit that. Um, somebody who was even just parading by and you know, engaged in that activity, those regulations can still be enforced. Uh, likewise, one of the complaints that evening was the fact that it was you know well after 10 o'clock and they had loud music playing and, and everything else. That too is something that is against our code and can be enforced uh, you know, in terms of dealing with that. So this is uh, a supplement to the regulations that we already have. 
I think we need to be very careful in how we word this and how we display this to the village of Germantown because I think there may be a lot of backlash if this is not properly worded with the correct definitions that are clearly defined for everyone to read and understand. Those are my only thoughts that, that we, we need to tread carefully on this one. Further discussion? In, in the village of Germantown, it's legal to operate a bulldozer at 6 a.m. in the morning until 10 p.m. at night. And, and we're talking about making picketing during those same hours against the law. I, I, have, uh, I, I can't see this. In neighborhoods? It, it, you can operate a bulldozer in a residential neighborhood. Yeah, it's on a construction more. site, correct? That's yeah. been properly deemed as a yeah. construction site? Yes. <laughs> Trustee Zabel. Again, I think the intent of this is that people have the right to protest, they have the right to march, but the village would like them to get a petition or get a permit to do it so we're aware of it, we can react to it. The idea is to try to stop that individual or groups that show up in the wee hours of the night and it gives the, the police the opportunity to not only use the tools that we have, but to cite this. The more things that you can cite going into a, a case or a court case, and I would assume that this would all be under municipal ordinance and in municipal court. Yeah. Correct. And uh, I wish that you would explain that uh, the two items under under two, the picketing uh, of any lawful manner for a labor dispute and that of a, a meeting and assembly on any premise commonly used for discussion, the right for a person to show up at that point and petition is not outlawed. In other words, if we hold something at the library and we hold a meeting or assembly, the people have the right to be there on public grounds protesting it without permits, without whatever is occurring, at least that's the way I read uh, 2B and uh, 2A, I believe, is uh, labor discussions. If there's a dispute between labor, people have the right to protest and, and complain without being any called. Uh, and I think that's the two exceptions that were granted by the Supreme Court. Um, right. The, the, the the, the language from Brookfield included both of those. Um, one minor correction, I guess, to your statement is is that this doesn't require a permit. It doesn't seek to permit any uh, particular activities. This uh, code is designed to cover the circumstances where you have a um, protest uh, or a demonstration that is uh, of the nature that we saw um, earlier this summer, uh, that for reasons of you know the code or whatever may not be able to be enforced. So, for example, um, you know we have noise regulations that uh, are put in place um, after certain hours. Um, we could nonetheless have a protest that occurs before those hours that would be uh, unruly and uh, you know the police might need to step in and, and utilize this tool as a method of declaring that to be unlawful and to uh, have the folks vacate. Uh, the two exceptions uh, are both really designed to address very specific uh, circumstances that the Supreme Court has uh, made clear um, th that there really aren't uh, the ability to regulate um, that conduct in most instances. And it's, a, it's an exception here, um, and, and I think it applies uh, particularly well here in Germantown because there are places where you may potentially see those activities occurring within what might otherwise be uh, you know, in front of a residence. So, for example, uh, you may have uh, somebody who wishes to 
uh, come and protest activities at the police department. Um, immediately across the street from the police department is a residence. Um, and so that would uh, be an in, 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 a, a situation uh, where that might apply. Um, I don't know whether, uh, you know, Gales, for example, has any union employees. I, I'm not sure. Certainly that would be another example where if they had a union dispute, um, you know, they're going to protest in front of the Gales building and obviously there's residences right across the street from there so um, you know it those are the the two exceptions that we're looking to cover and, and that's really a function of Supreme Court rulings on those two particular activities otherwise uh, I was only pointing out the fact that we now would would require a put a permit for a protest or a march or picketing that's a requirement that exists now I believe we have, we have a permit requirement for a parade, um, but but not for uh, a mo a protest of. But, but I think they re required a permit from when the school did the uh, did the march in spring when they came down Met One Road. I thought there was a, yeah, there was a permit, permit for that. right a parade. Well, a, a parade or a protest or whatever. <laughs> Give it to administrator. Uh, thank you. Just wanted to add briefly as the village attorney was speaking that um, one of the things that I think is important to take into account when discussing this is that the strategy of, of people from all, on all different types of issues and all different types of organizations of uh, picketing individuals homes in, in residential neighborhoods has been increasing um, you know and I've seen that going back to Governor Walker's uh, house in, in Wauwatosa, the, um, you know, you look at these, these incidents of the summer in, in other parts of the country, there have been, uh, you know, the, the village attorney mentioned if they were picketing Gale Foods, now a strategy might be to go to the CEO's house and, and, and picket there. Um, so that has been something that, um, uh, you know, in addition just to the one incident in, in Germantown this year, is something that I think we're seeing nationally as, as, as a trend. And, um, and that's why I think we'll see more communities that are looking to do something along these lines, maybe not exactly this, to, to better control it and, and regulate it. Trustee Baum. One of the problems I have is we're looking at this from one side. You're looking at it from the people who have the right to protest. What about the resident who has the right to enjoy their yard? Me and my kids used to play out in the street, and we would play flashlight tag, and we would play all kinds of games, and we were running all over the cul-de-sacs in the streets. This mob suddenly shows up, and we have to run scared into the house. What about their rights? What about the rights of the, of the homeowners? There's a difference between a demonstration and picketing, and and I think that's 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 what I'm trying to get to. If a mob shows up, clearly that should be against the law. But if there's one person with a political sign outside of my house because he thinks that I voted wrong, I'm I'm not so sure that I should have the right to call the police department and have him removed. But but a mob, I certainly agree with you, yes. Isn't it isn't it true that we already have the laws and codes and ordinances in place to prevent that mob and everything from coming to your house? Just like that demonstration that happened, they counted how many codes or ordinances that were broken that they chose not to enforce for reasons we all know. But that was already illegal in multiple ways, but we just chose not to enforce it. So what is the... What's the difference between what happened there that we chose not to enforce to this? Uh, so so the, 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 the demonstration that took place earlier in and of itself was not uh, in violation. Uh, the violations that took place that evening were the urinating on the lawns, the loud music after hours that we would otherwise prohibit 
loud music from being there. Um, th there would have been nothing that would have prohibited that large group of people from just standing in front of the chief's house um, to, 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 to protest and, and to, to have a demonstration. Um, it was the other actions that took place. The reason why, uh, quite honestly, it didn't get enforced that evening was because we didn't have the staff. We were outnumbered. Uh, and if you are in that circumstance, uh, you know, the police chief and, and the department made the decision that they weren't going to reasonably be able to control that group with the officers that they had on hand. Now, they've subsequently tried to identify folks through videos that were doing, you know, various activities and, and, tr and tried to do the best they could with it um, to, to issue citations after the fact. Um, but, but that was, that was the, the, the answer, was that, that they didn't feel that the, it, their safety would have been put at risk if they had entered into that group to try to enforce. Um, whereas, you know, with the DA's decision just last week or two weeks ago, um, we had a plan in place that we had the personnel ready. We would have been ready to go if, if necessary at that point. And I do not doubt the chief's decision on that whatsoever. I feel like his decisions, I, I mean, he did a great job at handling that crazy situation, 100%. But say those protesters came and did not urinate and did not play loud music and they just gathered there quietly picketing. Would they be completely covered under the ordinances as being legal at that point? Under our existing code, yes, they would have been okay. So you would still be able to enjoy your lawn and your cul-de-sac and everything if it was a peaceful protest, as long as they didn't play loud music and didn't urinate on your lawn and everything like that. I just think there's a very fine line that we're not properly defining here that could get out of control if we pass this as is. It, it is a fine line. And would you let your kids play out on the sidewalk? Absolutely not. Why can't another you enjoy your property? There, there was a fair amount of, of, of folks within that group that were exercising their right for open carry. Yep. That in itself is threatening not only to, to the residents, but uh, is made in effect to be so. Um, and so now you have uh, people that are, are fearful for their public safety based on what they see. They're looking for us to, to have a plan. What is your plan so that it doesn't happen again? What are you going to do so that something like this can uh, either be stopped or not allowed? This is one part of that plan based on the outcry I've heard and uh, some of the requests from the people that were in that neighborhood at that time and quite fearful uh, for their own safety. Yep. And Do my I... children's school got shut down for two days. Hmm? My children were home for two days because of the impending threat that it was going to happen again. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not downplaying that and I'm not, I don't, I don't know the right way to say it. I am not against this 100%. I just feel like it has to be more properly defined and that by passing it the way that we are with this language, I don't feel like it's adequate. What would you add? I'm not an attorney, and I don't know the legal language to but phrase it, but I feel like it is an infringement upon the freedom of speech and an infringement on people who do want to quietly and respectfully and lawfully protest. Further discussion. I, I, oh, Trustee, I, I, Trustee Hudson. Thank you. I, I, I want to support this also. And, and perhaps I am hung up on the word picketing when it's really meant for demonstration. Why was the word picketing chosen over demonstration? So E educate me, please. Uh, there, there wasn't a whole lot of thought that went into it. It was, I mean, quite honestly, um, it was, uh, you know, we, we looked to identify uh, potential um, 
uh, you know, regulations that might exist uh, to address uh, some of the concerns that had been raised um, by folks who were kind of in, in these circumstances that, that, that either they were one of the individuals that was being targeted or that they were neighbors of folks that had been targeted. Um, and, I'll, and I'll actually add that, that this was not something that, that our chief came to us and said, hey, do this. This was a, a result of one of our other clients looking at, hey, how do we address these types of things? And, and we looked at it, and what we did, which is what most lawyers will do, is, is that we had a Supreme Court case that looked at this very language and said, this language is okay when it comes to First Amendment questions, um, and we used it because we know that if it was challenged, we can just go back to that, you know, that Supreme Court case and say, we use the same language, we fall under that case, we are good. If we want to, to tweak the language, uh, you know, to, to modify the language, I think we can do that. Um, you know, I, I think you could use, instead of picketing, uh, you know, you could use, uh, you know, a, a demonstration uh, or, or something along those lines. Maybe we want to add a definition to picketing in this case that, you know, that we could do that. Um, you know, the, the just the, the concern, although obviously I don't know that it, it's a, a significant concern, but the, the, the more we deviate from what the Supreme Court has blessed, um, the, 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 the greater the chance that the Supreme Court looks at it and says, well, there's enough of a difference here that you're you know, we're not going to agree with you here. Um, obviously, we can look to try to, to minimize those concerns uh, by, by, you know, adding appropriate language and, and, and you know, utilizing all of the other cases that, that are out there to do that. Um, but, but this was not, I mean, we didn't sit down to, to, to really study or look at, um, you know, what would be the, the very best language to use. This was just, this is language that worked in a similar circumstance, and we're going to run with it. Trustee Baum. I would prefer to err on the side of the resident and that family who wants to play out in their front yard. I'd rather those people have the rights of their property without living in fear of somebody walking up and down their street with a gun carrying on at all hours of the night, even if this is just something that sits on the shelf for the extreme case. If, if people were, peace, were truly peacefully walking up and down my street, holding signs, doing a little chant, more money, more money, more money, <laughs> I could understand that, and I would, the police probably wouldn't engage. But when we got people blocking streets with cars, pulling out an entire band, having extremely bright lights shining into anything and everything, I think that goes beyond, and I think we should have a tool to disrupt that. That's and then it becomes, illegal, I can use it when I want to, I can leave it if, I, if it's not extreme. David, David uh, excuse me. I don't think anybody disagrees with you. I certainly don't disagree with you. My problem is, is if we pass this, we are taking away the right of the people to peacefully picket. That is against the law. You're taking the right of the owner to peacefully enjoy their yard. You're taking somebody's right away but to If it's do his something. neighbor that's picketing him. Right? Well, it could be his neighbor that's picketing him, though. But I'm scared stiff. I had a woman in the audience who was scared stiff, now wants to go get her own gun because she doesn't know what's going to happen next. So that's, that's a problem with concealing carry in the state of Wisconsin. If you have one person yeah. that's open carrying on a street, everybody lives in fear. Right. That, that's a very different argument than what we're talking about here today. I don't think the person should live in fear of whatever's going on in the street. Well, if it's a small, peaceful episode, then probably nobody gets called. The police don't get called. But when it gets out of hand like it did, we have a tool to break it up. I, 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 agree, with you. Illegal, I agree with you. When it gets out of hand like how it did, that's already illegal. This one defines it a little bit further. 
Certain things that are causing emotional disturbance and distress to the occupants of the neighborhood obstructs and interferes with the free use of public sidewalks and public ways of travel and such practices as its object or harassing of such occupants. And it even states, whereas a reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions on speech activities are appropriate where the public health and welfare and the good order of the community requires such restrictions so that members of the community feel secure in their homes and dwellings, ensuring a feeling of well-being, tranquility, and privacy. It, it, it is somewhat detailed in its definition of, of what it is and what it allows. If somebody comes between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. And, and is quietly walking up and down the streets with, with signs, I, I don't think it's an issue. If they're coming in and as, as a mob with loud music and uh, disruptive activities, I think there's a difference. And I think we both have the intelligence to recognize I what agree that as is. Well. But I think if we're going to put restrictions on our freedom of speech, we should make sure we do our due diligence to make sure we look up the definitions and we have the proper language in which we've done the resolution. in regards to the court case he just said and the he Supreme didn't. Court case that has already he didn't been put tested. Much thought. He just said he did not put much thought into the word picketing. He did it not. It was the same language that was used yes. in the one that was tested. Yes. It's basically a boilerplate on purpose so that if it is tested, all we can say is we fall under the same guidance. I'm done arguing. I'll, okay. I'll be. I'm just taking Dan's place. <laughs> Dan doesn't. I'm, I'm speaking. Dan doesn't <laughs> need help. I guess you guys all need one troublemaker on the board, and that's me tonight. <laughs> if do, does that's it make Hudson. does it make sense to put in a sp specific number of individuals, for example, picketing by more than ten people? Mm -hmm. Um, no, I would not say that it does uh, for um, the primary reason that any time you start making, you know, we slice the, the pie, so to speak, um, that each slice becomes a possibility for the court to look at it and say, why did you make that decision? What's different between nine versus ten? Um, and you know, you fall into to equal protection analysis then as to you know, does your distinction make logical sense, especially where we're dealing with uh, you know a, a constitutional right that if if you're going to make that distinction, there needs to be a rational basis as to why we're making that distinction. Um, and I think that's hard to do because I think that um, you know everybody's going to have different sensibilities that uh, you know in some cases, you know there may be people that are fine if you had a hundred people outside of their house picketing quietly. Um, on the other hand, there are going to be people that are going to be upset if it's two. Um, and so it's, it's you know, without a rational basis as to why we're making that distinction, I think that opens us up to, to a significant challenge. Whereas if we just say this is the, the, the practice that's prohibited, um, you know, then we don't have that distinction. And we, 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 we leave the equal protection stuff out of it. We leave it just in the First Amendment realm. Trustee Sable. In the Supreme Court case, did they put in a definition of picketing? Um, I don't believe they did, um, at least not. In is it possible to do a research on that? And if there is a definition, come back to us and add that definition to our code book so everybody has the same term as what it means? Yeah, I mean, we can certainly, if, if there is concern about, you know, hey, what do we specifically, uh, you know, are we looking to, to uh, prohibit, I, I'm open to doing that. Um, you know, this was language that, uh, yeah, as I say, came from that one case that, that we know is okay. Um, if there are concerns about it, um, you know, I, we're, we're obviously happy to, to, to go back and, and come up with something different based on the discussion this evening. Um, and, and to do that, um, you know, we would just need the direction to do so. so. Uh, uh, Mr. President, I'd like to put on the floor an amendment then that would uh, direct staff to come back with a definition for the word picketing. Are you then postponing no. action? 
I think we can do both. I think the action to still occur and you still vote on it, it's just that we know, we know we'll have a definition of it coming. And that, that is your motion? The motion is to have the direct staff or direct the illegal to give us a definition for picketing. Motion made. Do I have a second? I will second that. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Trustee Baum. Are there any other definitions that are in question that we should get at the same time? What's the definition of a protest? It's not in here. I think a lot of things need to be defined in here. Such as? Back up. beginning part gives a premise, the second part gives a cause. Where can I find the, sup the Supreme Court ruling? I can email you a copy. Okay. Further discussion on the motion to amend. Trustee Baum. Yeah, I'll just make the statement that I don't want this to be changed too drastically to get away from the original Supreme Court ruling. So I, I, I understand your caution, but then I want to caution the other side. Don't change it too much, otherwise it's not, it won't hold up in court. Yeah, that's why I asked to see if the court had a ruling on the term first. See if they had a definition. Trustee Miller. The question of that is, is the definition going to be part of this ordinance or is that just informational? This informational. Is okay. that where you vote in? To me, it doesn't make sense. You're going to use it? Wait until it that's a question for the attorney. I, I mean, my understanding on the motion that's presently on the floor would be that we would bring back a uh, an additional ordinance to add something to the code that would have a definition for it. See, I don't see where that's even necessary. I mean, this went all the way to the Supreme Court with the definition, not the definition, I'm sorry, with the term picketing in it, and they approved it, and it was okay. And we have an ordinance in a neighboring community that uses this and was tested. I don't see the reason for that. I had, I have good friends in that neighborhood, and they were terrified that night. And yeah, when when uh, when we need to restrict some things like this, this does not restrict the right to picket. It restricts the right to picket in front of a house. And if they did this at six o'clock that night and didn't urinate on somebody's lawn, that was legal. But because they did it at 10 o'clock, it wasn't. And, they and if somebody them. comes past your house and pickets at your house every day from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., goes home, comes back again next day, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., and they continue to do it for weeks on end, you can't do anything about it right now. I understand that. So I'm all for this. I mean, like I said, I had friends that were terrified there, and if we can help the residents feel safe in their homes with this, not restricting the right to pick it, only restricting the right where to pick it, that's fine by me. Good point. Trustee Kaminsky. I agree with Trustee Miller. Uh, we were all sitting here when those residents were in front of us that evening, how upset they were, and how terrified they were, and they all got up at that podium and told us exactly how they felt. Those are our constituents. That's who we represent. This is a Supreme Court decision that we're that we are modeling this after. We're good to go. Let's do what our citizens want. It's I, I, legal. Again, those that demonstration was not legal in many ways. Yeah. I get it. I get it. it I, Trustee Hudson. I, I agree with all of you that our residents want this. 
and I am here to represent the desires of our residents. If this is the best we can do, I will support this. I just question as to whether this is the best we can do, and it allows a little bit of overreach in my mind. I'm just trying to be a little more specific. I think all of us agree that the demonstration that took place was not picketing. I, I, I mean... Dan. Yep. Yeah, trusty wing. Discussion on the motion to amend. I would like to see the Wisconsin Supreme Court ruling before I feel comfortable passing this. Is it Wisconsin or was it now? Wisconsin. No, it was U.S. U.S. US Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. U.S. Supreme Court. It should, okay. should be in your email. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion on the motion to amend, which is to to give us a definition of picketing? Correct, Trustee Zeal. No other discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Motion fails. Back to the motion as was amended. Further discussion? It's all right. You don't have to. What the motion is? The amendment. We had two amendments. Yeah. All that's we had. I just, I just read it again. That's all, please. There was a motion by Baum, second by Miller, to approve... Um, the item D ordinance and ordinance creating section 9.21 prohibiting residential picketing and then there was an amendment to remove the word shall. Mm -hmm. Remove the word what? Shall. S-H-A-L-L. -L. No. 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 Exception. No. Exceptions. Exception. Sorry. Exception. Yeah. Under yeah. Sorry. Sorry. That's what we're voting on. Correct. As amended. As amended. Right. That's Thank what you. it is as amended. Are we voting on the amendment to remove exception? No. No. At the motion as amended. That's already amended. been passed. The motion as Thank amended. You. Further discussion on the motion as amended. We'll do roll call vote. Trustee Baum. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Hudson. Aye. Trustee Kaminsky. Aye. Trustee Myers. Aye. Trustee Peeper. Nope. Trustee Wing. Aye. Trustee Zabel. Aye. President Walter. Aye. Motion carries. Takes care of all items on tonight's agenda under consent agenda. There is no new bu uh, unfinished business. There is no public hearing. So we'll go to new business item A, which is ordinance 17-2020, ordinance to adopt current Wisconsin administrative commercial building codes. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. This came through Public Works. Yes. 
pretty straightforward. Straightforward. General government, through finance. general government and finance, okay. housekeeping items. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? Just and, 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 and whether you, you folks want to uh, formally do an amendment or not, uh, or if it's just the uh, the standard, it's kind of understood. Um, there are, as I'm going through it, uh, as I was going through it earlier today, to um, just kind of review the agenda as I always do. Um, there's a number of just non-substance changes, some spelling errors, some incorrect references to statutes, um, that kind of stuff that I'm going to go in and make uh, after the fact. Um, so you can either add that as a condition or just understand that I'm going to be doing that. Further discussion? No further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? One opposed? <laughs> Trustee Winger, are you opposed? No, it's just Oh, okay. Got it. Motion passes. Okay. Next new business item is item B, resolution 59-2020, contract with McIron McGuire Iron Inc. in an amount not to exceed $1,808,000 for the construction of an elevated storage tank in TID number 8. Make a motion to approve the contract with McGuire Iron not to exceed $1,808 million for the construction of the tank as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Trustee Baum, <laughs> your voice has changed. <laughs> I, I would like some of the pumpkin bread, though. Yeah, please. Um, so, are we going into an agreement with yeah. Richfield? Are we not? It's not on the. Uh, well, but the one point eight one million dollars is that for the extra tall one, or is that for the short version? It's the short one. It's the short one. So if we approve this, we're committed to doing the short one. We're not worried about what, Rich, what we're doing with Richfield. Village Administrator. Um, this, would, this would preclude, if, if the contract was approved for the 1808000 uh, the tower would not be tall enough to provide service to Richfield. So it would eliminate that as a possibility. Wow. Um, That's kind of a back way to do it. Present. <laughs> Trustee Kaminsky. It says in here the cost for the alternate item is 114000 and they're going to hold these bid documents until November 29th so to decide whether to go forward with a higher elevation. So we could, I, I, could we actually just postpone this, or do we need to vote on this tonight, I guess is my question. Get more public comment if that's what we're after. Th that was uh, my recommendation was to, would be to hold the contract um, uh, un until you uh, until the November second meeting um, to get more public input and then uh, award the contract with okay. that uh, uh, decision in or or not in. Okay, we have motion on the floor ready. Yeah, we but we're in, I only made the motion so we could have to start discussing right. it. I'm going to make an amendment to that motion to hold this contract until um, November 29th to allow for more general discussion from the public before we make a final determination. As November 2nd was his recommendation. But the contract has some language in it that they'll hold yeah. it until that time. Yeah. We have a I'll motion. Second. Did I hear a second? I'll second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Motion to amend. Made and seconded. Discussion on a motion to amend. Trustee Myers. Uh, Larry's coming up there, so I'll, I'll ask him the question. Uh, uh, was it thought to be able to start construction this year or next year on this contract? So actual groundbreaking, maybe this year for the foundation, but you wouldn't see any steel going up until next year. So they would probably, they may try to get the foundation in through the winter. It's a lot of concrete to pour. The other thing I, I came here to recommend that if you use November 29th, 
realize that if you have a board meeting before that date, that's the job dead date. After that, the contractor could walk from the contract and we're stuck rebidding again. Okay. So the 29th is the extension that we gave them 60 days that we have the ability to legally hold their bid without awarding it. But after that 60 days, they have the ability to walk. Okay. Thank you, Larry. That was my second question. Maybe you answered her. So if you pick a date to hold it to, you have to have a date where there's a board meeting to act on it. Which would be the 16th or the 2nd? Correct. One or the other. Trustee Baum. So the cost of the additional tower, the alternate, is $114,000. We could go ahead and approve the additional $114,000 today which gives us the additional capacity whether we engage with Richfield or not we just have more water volume for more development out in that area no why the, the $114,000 takes the half a million gallon tank million gallon tank and raises it it doesn't change the storage capacity so we have to build a tower 35 feet taller to supply the legal pressure per the DNR code PSC to the village of Richfield because their property is higher. So we need our tower higher. So so, if, so there has there's no benefit to the village to do this at all. Correct. It's for pressure to, correct. To do yeah. the to do the tower. No. No only to benefit Richfield. The base right. bid for one point eight oh eight million is the the, G, the Germantown Tower. And and to facilitate just to have a number obtained through a bidding process where you get a better number, we did an alternate right away to see what would it cost to raise the tower for which field in case there was the desire to to go out and, and get into an MOU with Richfield. Okay, okay so, so the tower is gonna go up for one point eight yeah million. So the alternate is the hundred and fourteen thousand. My my way of thinking is there's a there's a there's a negotiation there's an opportunity and it's for me it's not a if we start working with richfield it's when we start working with richfield and that's not a discussion for this item correct, correct. but when can we have that discussion when can that be put on the agenda november 2nd november 2nd, november 2nd? yes okay that's what steve mentioned before i'll hold that discussion till then <coughs> With that in mind, I don't. I don't. So, unless I'm incorrect, Attorney Sajic, the the base contract could be awarded tonight for the 1.08 million, and we could always award the alternate bid, um, or we could be directed to hold the signing of the contracts until the end of that, that time period. Uh, my understanding of the amendment that's pending would be we'd hold the whole contract. With the amendment that's been made, right. right. But I think if we clarify what we would be awarding, maybe the amendment doesn't um, isn't needed. If we clarify what we're awarding tonight, Th we're going to build the one the one point eight million dollar tower is needed for Germantown. That's correct. Plain and simple. I, I'm, I'm the question really is the alternate. Amendment. Who is the second? Uh, Are you okay with that? Why? Because I, I would, what uh, our director says. Because she's looking to approve the one point. What our director says makes total sense. And then hold the option yeah. out until November. So the way. I'll agree to withdraw. <laughs> the way we bid the project is that the higher tower required a larger foundation. I, I bid it that way. The only question is how tall do we build the tower? And all that is is that center tube. All it is is, is extending that. So I, I think the contractor could, could have that awarded to them sometime in the future as long as they're not done fabricating steel. Does, does the $111,000 include the cost of the larger foundation or not? The 114000 does not. It's minimal. It's, 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 a, it's around a $5,000 extra is what I was told. We would, we would pass it on to Richfield if we would enter into agreement with Richfield. So, how, what is the, uh, so what, would, what would be the proper way to state that then? Would we need a motion to amend to state it to break it apart? I think, I think you, would, uh, you would do a motion. Uh, 
I'm just I'm struggling a little bit just because I, I haven't seen the actual bid documents themselves and, and how it's worded. I I'm think just, what we're saying is we recognize the need of the 1.8 for the tower that we're going to build no matter what. What right. we want no, to I, I understand that side the is is the uh, additional for the possibility, if it's so chosen, to share services. Right. To what, what I'm what I'm struggling with is the way that we. Uh, accomplish that it, it it my my thought is what we would do is make an amendment that the uh, we, well we've got a motion to approve the the original um, the amendment would be to uh, direct uh, the signatories to the contract to uh, withhold signing off on the contract until um, November 20th which would then give us two meetings, the November 2nd and the November 16th, to potentially add to the contract. And we could then add that uh, at that point, And then we'd sign the contract based on either the approval this evening for the 1.8, or if we add something in those next two meetings, it would be for both. Isn't it simple as awarding the contract the base bid and adding 114000 on through a change order? I d since we already have a, a, a bid on the alternate, award the alternate to a change order. That'd be so easy. Twenty fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> um, without seeing the bid documents, I I don't know. I, probably, but uh, th there may be tricks to that. That without seeing the documents, I, I don't know the answer for sure. The the safest way is the way that I just described. Do you have what you stated? Yeah. Any chance? I'll make that amendment. Second. Okay. As Brian had stated. As Brian had everybody stated. Everybody clear on that? Direct signatory. Direct signatory. Well, let's, let's see. Direct <laughs> signatory is to withhold until November 20th to give two meetings to potentially add to the contract. That's right. what you would the say. Only, yeah. the, only th the only thing I would add up to the 20th in case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just add up to. Otherwise, the rest of it, yes. That's just my opinion. That's your motion to amend, Trustee Kaminsky. Yes. All right, and we have a second. Yes. Okay. Discussion on the motion to amend. No. <laughs> no, dis no discussion. No, you can't do that. You just don't do nothing. Call, call the vote. <laughs> no, don't do that. Please say you I didn't have any. Uh, uh, you can't oppose. Uh, uh, this is just the amendment. Never mind. Correct. Now back to the motion as amended. Further discussion. No further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Baum? Aye. Trustee Kaminsky? Aye. Trustee Hudson? Aye. Trustee Miller? Aye. Trustee Myers? Aye. Trustee Peeper? Aye. Trustee Wing? Aye. Trustee Zabel? Aye. President Walter? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Last item on the new business is item C, stop loss insurance renewal. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. This came through GGF today. Yeah. Trustee Zabel. It, it, it did come through GGF, and I think Kim, since she's been so patiently sitting here, she would love to. She would love to tell you what policy we're going with. No. Director, <laughs> Director Rath, would you could you come up and give us some background and information I mean, on this new she, business? She's only going to be here for a few more weeks. So you <laughs> Due to some higher claims we've experienced and their 
liability that they had to cover that for us. So the capturing of costs, the realization that specific people or, or subscribers on our group have, um, have claims that are in excess of over seven, eight hundred thousand dollars this year alone. So it's a self-insurance plan. We do have values and peaks with that. Hopefully it normally evens out that we have pretty decent years that covers and this is just one of our anomalies and hopefully we work through it in the next couple of years by adding um, money to the budget to cover it in the future so it's not so high so that we do some tightening up of maybe what our, uh, what our plan actually has as far as deductibles and co pays and maybe premium share like employees. It's all working towards it. And unfortunately this has come through. Uh, the carriers expect to have, have uh, agreements in place 60 days before renewal and not much before that as far as getting information so they have as much time to make their predictions and their quotes. So it comes up pretty quickly and we need to pass this tonight. Let's get this due tomorrow. <laughs> can, can I just add one, one sure. thing? Feels um, clear. Yeah, just as an addition, the document that we have in the packet was from previous. So you just pass out on um, your desk. So I would just like to allow the administrator or the director to sign off on the contract because what we have in here is is different because of this. So just to allow one of them to sign, please. Good. Trustee Zabel. And again, I want to make sure that the motion tonight was made to follow the recommendation of GGF. Dennis, your motion was to follow the recommendation from GGF, right? And yes. The new the carrier and the net uh, net commission one from uh, B, uh, QBE. The one that had the one word different. Right. The, other one. the net net commission. Okay. Everyone clear on that? Further discussion. No further discussion. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Myers? Aye. Trustee Peeper? Aye. Trustee Wing? Aye. Trustee Zabel? Aye. Trustee Baum? Aye. Trustee Hudson? Aye. Trustee Kaminsky? Aye. Trustee Miller? Aye. President Walter? Aye. Motion carries. Takes care of all items under new business. Takes care of all items on tonight's agenda. Before we adjourn, the next regular village board meeting will be on Monday, November 2nd at 7 p.m. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you all for watching. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Brian. Are you do? I've got a lot. Oh, he's so. They're all flagged. I'll work with um, Brian on the amendments. Uh, See, yeah, this.